How many of you have seen this gif and love it? There's something wondrous about it. This girl sees herself in a fantasy world and just as she hops over some railings, the world is torn from her, the curtain falls and suddenly she realises it was all fake. She'd always made a fatal error and it took someone else to have her snap out of the illusion. It's a pretty fascinating gif. It's wondrous, it's mysterious and also a little dark, maybe even relatable to some of you. This is from Paprika, the final feature film of wonderful director Satoshi Kon's lifetime, before he would sadly pass away in 2010. In a way, all of Satoshi Kon's works tied colourful and dark experiences together, but not in a way anyone would typically call depressing. Tokyo Godfather surrounds a literal ragtag team of homeless people, an elderly man who's lost his family, a transgender woman living on the streets, and a young runaway child, and yet it's much more about luck, determination, and happenstance than the depressing surroundings that its characters find themselves in. Millennium Actress, which came much earlier, is just about an interview with a retired, dying actress, but it's much more a celebration of film and love than it is a tearjerker, although I'm sure many of you will cry by its end. But see, there's one work for me though that among his catalogue really stands out, and it crushed me for about a month after I read it. That's his unfinished manga, Opus. Opus was originally being published in a now defunct magazine just titled Comic Guys, which shut down less than a year after Opus started, which left Opus unfinished all the way from 1996 to having its ending released posthumously in 2010. But it's really hard to see that this wasn't intended. Opus's unfinished manga ending features Cone himself and his real life wife, and while it might be intended as a statement to his manga work remaining unfinished and being cut off early, the unfinished, sketchy nature of these pages and the message about things being cut short just feel too close to home when it's framed as a posthumous work from a man who just hit major mainstream and worldwide success with Paprika and had his life sadly ended unceremoniously amidst creation of a to this day unfinished film due to a battle with pancreatic cancer. Opus's story is pretty unique and it's probably a somewhat unexpected direction for a fan of Cohn's work. It's structured as a meta story. It surrounds a writer who gets sucked into their own manga, and he has to find a way to get the manga back to normal within time to finish it and then publish its final chapter. However, where this gets pretty different from the average creator versus creation story is that the manga being written in the story is all about psychics. Each character at some point reads the writer's mind and learns the truth of their existence just being created by someone. Of course, this is presented with beautiful trippy visuals like most of Cohen's work and it gets very playful with the whole being in a manga thing. Blank faced crowds that the author's assistant hadn't filled in yet chase after them. He takes a bike from the background, the city falls apart around them into small cardboard cutouts as they near the distance of what he's actually drawn for scenery. It's all very fun and it should hold your attention well enough to the end. Besides a focus near the end on graphic past abuse of the manga's main character, which I of course can't show here and it will be too much for some people. But I think it's intended as commentary of Perfect Blue, which hadn't released yet at the time of his writing. But the in-universe author notes himself that he thinks he was extreme in showing what he did happening to this character. But after this point comes the story's sudden complete dissolution. The main character actually fails in his goal of retrieving the manuscript and the whole manga world is destroyed around them. We see a sudden cut after this and this is where the real world comes in. Not the real world in the manga, the actual real world. Satoshi Kon is told that the magazine he's publishing Opus in is ending, and even after pleading he only needs three chapters to finish the story, or asking if he's going to at least get a graphic novel deal to publish the ending, the staff at the magazine can only tell them they're sorry and that it's over. Kon takes this as closing the book on this portion of his life, since he's busy with Perfect Blue anyway, and doing a manga as well as a movie simultaneously was just too much work. But just as he's discussing his plans to finish the manga regardless, even though the publishing contract is ending, and that he's going to write his own abrupt ending that takes place in the real world for a final chapter, the characters come to life to meet him. They banter back and forth about the fact their own story won't get an ending, when Cone's wife comes home, sees the main character come to life in his room, and she screams. The end. It gives this story a sort of eerie, cyclical feeling to it. We start with a troubled artist's unfinished story just on the edge of being released, and then we end on the same note. 
Judging by Khan's own words, where he tells his publisher he can finish in just three more chapters, but after their meeting, he calls what's presumably a different person and he tells them he can change it and it can be released in around 350 pages, which is Opus's actual line. It can be taken that this is a different story to the actual story of Opus. We, Khan, and these characters have been robbed of the ending, and instead we get an unceremoniously cut off closing of this chapter of Khan's life with a scream. Intentional or otherwise, I really felt this when I read it. Having watched and loved all of Cohn's work, it just felt like such a testament to the man and his effort to have him come back and present a manga like this to his fans after his own passing. It overwrites the rest of the manga's story with a message that sometimes things just unfairly get cut short and don't get their fair shot at the time that they deserve. Being presented in the unfinished form that it has, and being posthumous, it just feels like a tragic rumination and one of mankind's greatest directors sorely passing from us early, and the closure simply being that we have to accept that. Manga fans have been having to deal with this phenomenon a lot lately, with Miura passing and leaving Berserk forever incomplete in 2021, and Takashi just now teasing more Hunter x Hunter this month, with it in fans' minds, maybe we will, maybe we won't see the series actually conclude within his lifetime, I think Opus just gives us a great opportunity to reflect on how much we value these wonderful people while they're still here, instead of missing our opportunity when either theirs or our own stories go forever unfinished. With that, I'd just like to ask you guys to stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.